In round one of the Asia Rugby Sevens series, Hong Kong held off a physical challenge from finals debutant Sri Lanka to win their home tournament and go top of the table. With a shot at World Seven Series qualification on the line, can anyone rein in Hong Kong? With the advent of the Asian Five Nations in 2008, opportunities for international rugby in the region rose dramatically. Perhaps no team has benefited more over that period than Hong Kong. Rowan Vardy's hat-trick in the Garda notwithstanding, Hong Kong spent the early years of the competition battling to retain their place in the top flight, finishing one from the bottom in 2009. Back in the day, uh, when I when I joined the team, I turned 18. There were two guys in the team who were 36, and I think you wouldn't get that age gap anymore. Um, and the problem was, uh, Hong Kong's quite a transient place, so you'd get some good players coming in, qualifying, and then leaving the next year. Whereas now, most of our team's made up of um, guys like you know Max, uh, Mike Coverdale, Chris Mays, the the young guys who grew up in Hong Kong. In the years since. Hong Kong has cemented its place as a top three regional 15 side, earning a spot in the newly created Asia Rugby Championship in 2015. In the Sevens Code, they've been downright successful, winning the series outright in 2012 and 2014, and narrowly missing out on a place in Rio last year. As the program has solidified in strength, an undercurrent of development has taken hold. There's a lot of things going on within Hong Kong rugby. It's not just uh, it's all come together at once and there will be challenges to develop more players. But there's been targeted uh, mechanisms and systems put in place to ensure that it doesn't become a one-off fluke that your Max Woodwards and Michael Coverdales are coming through to, to supplement what you have in terms of Rowan Varty and Tom McQueen and Alex McQueen and the likes. Vardy maintains a place in the squad, but his days are clearly numbered. Salom Yu Kam Shing broke into the national team in 2008, and like Vardy, represents the bridge between amateur and the professional eras. Over the course of nearly a decade, his exploits have included a number of Hong Kong Sevens appearances, as well as a successful run on the Moscow-hosted Rugby Sevens World Cup. The biggest point is a 冇乜冇乜誒團結咁嘅嘢，就飆 up 到一個好有團結同埋好有自信嘅一隊咯。我覺得呢樣嘢係誒最大嘅變化。If you embodies the present, the future comes in the form of 24-year-old Max Woodward. The Valley Rugby stalwart was catapulted to the captaincy just two years after making his international sevens debut in 2013. The role is one he continues to grow into and mirrors his development as both a player. And a leader. I've gone from, you know, coming into the team being being like terrified on whether I'm going to be good enough to make that 12, to to working on where I thought where I think I need work, and then now to to be lucky enough to captain the side and having seen that development, and also you you understand, you know, you. As a youngster, you're almost just thrilled to be there, you know? And then now, as you buy in more, the years you play, it means that much more to you to play and everything's on the line. The Hong Kong Rugby Union is in the enviable position of replenishing its ample coffers annually on the back of the world-renowned Hong Kong Sevens. They've strategically ploughed a significant portion of that money back into the community. With a steady pipeline of young talent coming through, are once unimaginable feats becoming more realistic. In terms of my ambition in, in the sport, 
to have a consistent spot on the World Series is, is, would be the best, the pinnacle for me. I mean, even, and then looking forward, you know, obviously 2020 is, is a long way away. So that is, there's always something on my mind, like to play in that Olympics uh, when we get there. But for now, like, I think the World Series is a real big cherry for us. Round two of the Asia Rugby 7 Series moved to the Seoul suburb of Incheon, South Korea. Korea was impressive in the first leg, going out to Hong Kong in the semis before rebounding to a third place finish with a win over China. Their hopes for a top two finish in the series and a place in the World Series qualifier were boosted significantly with a memorable opening day. Emphatic wins over Japan and Chinese Taipei set them up for a pool decider against Hong Kong. Hong Kong breezed through their first few matches as well, but they ran into a buzzsaw in Korea, who knocked off the table toppers on the final play of the match to go top of Pool A. Taipei and Japan rounded out the group. In Pool B, China was looking to make it two straight undefeated Saturdays. They shot out of the gate beating Malaysia and Singapore by a combined score of 72-0. Hong Kong finalist Sri Lanka, meanwhile, skated through their early matches as well, defeating Malaysia here 41-5. Under the lights at Nam Dong Stadium, China, through Shan Chuang Shan, touched down on its final possession to win and go top of the group. Malaysia squeaked out a 12-7 win over rival Singapore to finish third. When we return, semi-final action from the career leg of the Asia Rugby 7 Series gets underway with Sri Lanka facing off against hosts, Korea. The second leg of the Asian Rugby 7 Series was played at Incheon's Namdong Stadium, one of the host venues for the 2014 Asian Games. After a full slate of matches on day one, the semi-final shook out as expected, with Korea and Sri Lanka kicking things off. In it goes from Richard Dharmapala, the Koreans put a push on, the Sri Lankans get it back. It's Dharmapala, he's stepping off the left, the left again, he throws out a wobbly one to Handa Pangoda and over he goes. Sri Lanka have stunned the Koreans for an early score here at Nam Dong. Here we go then. Are they going to kick it? No, they're not. Oh, great bit of footwork to get on the outside. Across comes Jong, he puts the kick in, does Surya Bandara. Who's on the infield? It's try score Handa Pangoda. Can you control it? It's a good first effort. Wow! Try number two for Salia Handa Pangoda. How about that from their own try line? This is Surya Bandera. He gets taken out by Jong, who comes across, puts in a perfect kick. Controlled once. And he made that look very easy. Kokolad out to the gas man, Jong. They've given him an inch, he'll take it. Kokolad needs to straighten here. Throws out the wide one to Kim Jong-min. Here comes Ranjan, will come at him. Big bump. Ranjan goes down. Kim flicks it up to Lee Chai Park, and they strike back with a quality try in the corner. Koreans struggling now to get back behind the ball. They've got no one behind the ball as Ranjan gets his hands on it up to the 10 metre line now. Sorry, there is Ranjan injecting himself. Surya Bandara set up that first try. It comes wide now. Can Jang get across? Can he hit him off at the pass? Duncha Dayan looks like he's going for the corner. And he gets it in the corner. Try number three. That was end to end stuff. And it's Sri Lanka who finish it. Danushka Ranjan added a fourth to ensure Sri Lanka would make their second finals appearance on the Asia Rugby 7 Series this year. We expected a lot from them, their physicality and mostly their forward running. But um, we focused on hitting the wide channel, so um, the team is pretty happy with their performance overall. And um, the attitude the boys have leading up to the game was good, so that's what paid off. 
That left it to Hong Kong and China to decide who would meet Sri Lanka in the final. There's Woodward. There was a lot of talk whether he's going to make any games today. He's got a thigh strain. Could be Bravado will get him a long way in this game. Vardy now puts a short one. This will test the quad for Woodward. Ah, and he's knocked it on, but he's won a penalty. Charlie Brown not rolling away. Well, he could have argued perhaps a high tackle, but Hong Kong play on quickly. Rimini to Woodward. Quick hands here. Meacham to Jones. He's got an open line. Lee Jones. He's going in, and Shan will not stop him. Perfect start for Gareth Baber's men. Two minutes chance to put a score on against the six men of China. Lee Jones back to Rowan Vardy. There's a move on here. He goes through the gap. McQueen hasn't quite got the space. Interplay between McQueen and Vardy, and that's the experience of players like McQueen and Vardy combining down this left-hand flank to bamboozle the Chinese defence. The penalty will be played and another chance now against six. They want to take this opportunity. Jones to Rimini. Can he put Coverdale in? Can he get the Fen going? He's over. He scored it. A third try. Ben Rimini gets under that. It's a pitching wedge and McQueen tears after it. Looks like he's knocked it on, but no. Hong Kong again with Coverdale. Off the left, the right, the left, the right. Doesn't know what to do. Jones just trying to keep his feet there as he bridges. Meets him now with the cheeky little chip through. Good vision. Can McQueen he can't quite keep his feet though as Shan comes crashing down on him, but good mixing up there. And good communication between McQueen is Woodward. Gets those big thighs of his going, reaches out. The skipper has perhaps put this one away now. Max Woodward was try number four for Hong Kong. Burrowing in and he gets it. McQueen sees the arms out, thinks about just maybe dropping it to get the penalty. And Good, slow, patient work and build up here by Hong Kong. Kaduli to Mays. He's going to put you away. No, he's not. No way, no chance. He shows and goes. And Chris Mays goes across. Obviously, we learnt a few things uh, from last night's performance against Korea and we wanted to put those straight. And uh, part of that was a bit of an aggression in, in and around tackles. And I uh, thought we did that well. We controlled most of the game and pleasing to come through uh, without conceding a try. Coming up, Japan and China battled out for the women's final when we return. Welcome back to round two of the Asian Rugby 7 Series. With spots in the World 7 Series qualifier hanging in the balance, Korea and China met the third, fourth place playoff looking for valuable series points. Matt Rodden, referee's got his arm out for some advantage. Lee Jai Bok, back to Jang Song Min, off the left, off the right. Hooks up with Kim Jong Min. Can he go all the way? He's been tipped. Can he reach out? Yes, he can. What a crowd pleaser that is. Put it down to Jang Song Min, but Kim Jong Min finishes off. Good opening passage by South Korea. Here goes Han. It's been impressive. Gets the legs going. Busts out a one into the 22. Lee tries to hold him up, but the, the gap, the damage has been done. It goes wide. Kim Hyun Soo in for try number two. Tries to dance around in the dead ball area. Put that down to Han. Lee Jo Bok gets it in. Jang Mun gives it back to Lee. Crabbing across the field goes Kim. Look at the straight hard running from Kim Hyun Soo again. He's in for number two. Straight from the line out. Counter rucking's good from Han. Here comes Ma Chong. We'll take a bit of brilliance from him to unlock this Korean effort. Ford. It's not called. Wang is going to go over in the corner for. Is he over? Did he get it down? Matt Rodden's going to have a word with his assistant over there. Been held up. 
And that is a brilliant bit of defense. China, well, their semi-final was disastrous. 27-0, they got dotted by Hong Kong after a big day one. Coquillard goes up. This big athlete, can he put away Kim Namuk? He does. And that's exactly what Johnny Walters would have wanted. Straight from the kickoff, Coquillard flies high. Looking wide, here's Ma Chong. Puts on some footwork, there he goes, he breaks the first line. Links up with this big man, look at the speed of Chen Yong Chang as he blasts away. We played some good sevens and uh, we played to a pattern. Um, so the stuff that we've been working on over the last three weeks uh, really paid off. Japan and China have shown that they are currently playing at a level far superior to their competition. Japan got the better of China in the Hong Kong final, but only just. Could China turn the tables here? Now some numbers will do this. Mayu Shimizu eyes it up and this little superstar goes in for the first try of this cup final. She has been absolutely blistering. This is you. Look at the leg drive there, just stomping over Takeuchi and Yamanaka. It's great skills all around. It's good defense from Japan, but Nakamura falls off one. Anakuwai falls off one. And it's going to be Jiang Chen Chan. It's going to go all the way. Here comes Shimizu. She's not going to give up. Uh, but it's too late. And the defense there for Japan, usually watertight, but a couple of important misses there. Now there's some numbers on the far side. The hood is gone. It's going to take some mighty defense to shore this up, which they do. Here goes Jiao, look at her, a jinking weaving run. There she goes, this little Chinese superstar. We said so, keep your eyes on her, and she skipped past Nakamura, and that is a crucial blow right on the hooter to China. Gutsy stuff. Xu Xiaoyan works it into midfield. Good, straight, hard running, and a bit of a jink. She's going to put her eyes now on the corner flag, and look at that from Liu Yang. What an individual piece of brilliance to take it round to the posts. That is what you want from your marquee players. Zhao comes away. This is what she did in Hong Kong from a scrum. She ran 80 from a scrum. Here comes Susumi. Can she get her? What a race between these two speedsters. Tries to throw her off. Susumi takes her down. What a dogfight. Sun Ting Ting is there. Incredible scenes. Now Japan with a chance. Bouncing it off the chest is Keiko Kato. Can she go under the bow? She hasn't got the gas. She's going to have to link up. Look at that China with three players back. They're desperate. Here's Nakamura. Chiharu Nakamura under the posts. What an incredible passage of play. This time the match, we all the same. The quicker the the 防守进攻的支援都比在香港的那一站支援的快。呃，整体的团队的作战能力也比之前提高了一大块。呃，所以这一次的比赛，呃，赢了也在我们意料之中。So China struggled for disappointing loss in Hong Kong to come back here in Korea and take top honors. The victory pulls them even with Japan and ensures that the third and final leg in Sri Lanka will decide the series. Coming up next, finals action between Hong Kong and Sri Lanka. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Namdong Stadium in Incheon, Korea. For the second straight Asia Rugby 7 Series event, Sri Lanka and Hong Kong played their way to the final. It's going to be Hong Kong and Sri Lanka in a repeat of the leg one final 
Max Woodward and Danushka Ranjan lead out their sides in front of this excited crowd who have just seen a great Women's Cup final. Quickly off the top and Ben Rimini now leads the surge forward. Queen gets across him and here comes Vardy, puts on some footwork, meets him. It's been dynamite. Banging across now, hands up out in front. Here's Lee Jones, he scored a lot of tries in this event. Here he goes again, the big man from Cambridge, New Zealand, opens the scoring. He's been huge over these two days for Hong Kong. Here goes Rancho and steps off the right, defeats Rimini. Coming back at him is Vardy, he wasn't to be fooled. And Vardy gets up and wins the ball. Meacham takes on Handa Pangoda, puts the brakes on, waits for the reinforcements. It's covered out, he's been doing some good work. Lee Jones is on hand! And the big man goes in for number two. Johnny on the spot. And put that down to Rowan Vardy on defence. It's a penalty, so we play on. There's no respite. Dunsha. Dayan. I think Hannah Patagoda is down injured after that great tackle. So Sri Lanka with six as they try to put on some points. What's going on here? He's booted it forward to his own player who's offside and giving Hong Kong now a last chance. With only six players, surely Hong Kong will finish this off. Vardy. He has eyes only for that try line and he won't be stopped, Rowan Vati. And we have a four on two coming back this way. May sizes it up. Woodward needs to put someone away, but he gets taken in a ball and all tackle by Dayan. Rowan Vati gives it to Meacham. He straightens, he steps. Can he reach out? Yes, he can. Try number four. And almost toying with the defence there, Hong Kong, side to side. And eventually, the man they call Meach goes in near the posts. Here comes Meacham again. Kadu Lee's on the field. Meacham goes in to secure that one. Jones to Mays. Mays is going to go over in the corner for a second rapid try in the second half. Hong Kong are really hitting their straps now. Last 30 seconds. Hong Kong really taking an advantage into the third leg. Here goes Kadu Lee. McQueen bangs off the right, straightens up. He's got to look for support now. Kadu Lee's there. Can he get the little legs going? <laughs> Puts in the fend on Suri Bandara. And good work from Kadu Lee to finish that one off at the Hooter. To win the final and, and concede no tries was, was real important for us especially like a team against, uh, against a team like Sri Lanka, who have got a lot of X factor, you know, uh, quick players around the park for us to stop them scoring was a big achievement. After a less than stellar opening day, Hong Kong regroups on day two and earns its second straight series win, while Sri Lanka inches ever closer to Asia's second spot in the World Series qualifier. Be sure to join us next time when we travel to Colombo for the third and final leg of the 2016 Asia Rugby Seven Series. And for all the news that's Asia Rugby, be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. That's it from Korea. See you next time.